Hi, welcome back. So this is going to be the final video on or in this section. We're not really going to be doing anything or styling the website. But for now, I just want to talk a little bit about a very important part of CSS. Now, this is pretty much going to define the way that you look at CSS. And we've written a lot of CSS code here. Well, we're not really looking at properties yet, but we've covered a lot of different selectors and how they work. But now we need to put the two together. We know what properties are and we definitely know what selectors are. So we need to know how these two work together. Now I've talked a little bit about this in the past, but we haven't actually gone through it in detail. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So first of all, if you look at all of the CSS code, we can see a pattern involve here. First of all, in every single one of these, there are these curly braces. And on top of that, in every single one, there is some italicized text, which is due to the uh, development tool that we're using, but there's some italicized text and then some other text here, and there's always a colon and a semicolon. And on top of that, before every first curly brace, there's always going to be some form of text here, which is our selectors. But how do these actually work together? So this is very important for something called the CSS general rule, and it's pretty much going to teach you how all CSS is supposed to look. So first of all, there's always three parts to your, um, to your selector here. There is the selector itself. There's the curly braces, which actually represent something called a CSS block. And then there's the properties. So first of all, let's talk about the selector. Now, we all know that a selector defines what elements you're trying to collect or target on your HTML page. A selector can look any different way. It can look like this with some weird symbols. It can have colons and pseudo selectors, or it can just look something very plain um, like this. But we all know that they do something different. And over the last few videos, we've been covering what selectors actually do. So now what we're going to do is go through and I'm going to teach you how this selector plays in with everything else. So we're, we have our selector over here. This could be anything, uh, an element selector, pseudo selector, attribute selector, like one of these. Um, but for now, we have our selector. So this is going to target some element on a page. Now, the part we haven't talked about is something called the CSS block. So pretty much, once you select something, you need to define all of your styles. And as we know, all of your styles have to go in between these two curly braces. So that's what we call a CSS block. The curly braces define the beginning and end of this block, and it can be empty. It doesn't need to have anything inside it. But what's going on here is this block is going to contain all of the styles that are then going to be targeted towards our selector. And then, of course, we have the properties. So all of these have only had one property, but you can actually do more than one property. So a property looks like this property, a colon, and then a value and a semicolon. So the property is going to be the name of the actual style. This can be color, background, and we're going to learn a bunch of these throughout this course. But this could be anything. On the other hand, the value has to be sort of targeted or matching the style of the property. So for example, if this was a color, we can use pixels because pixels are for size. So there are many different ways that you can um, use these different values, and they all depend on your property. So what I didn't show you is you can actually have more than one property. Now these can be in any style, as long as they have the semicolon and the colon, um, and they come inside the block. So this can be property two and value two. And you can put pretty much as many styles as you want in here. So for example, if you wanted to style a subtitle and you wanted to change the font size, the color, and the background all at the same time, you don't need to create three separate CSS blocks. You can do it all in one. And that's the real power of CSS is that you don't have, you can keep your code concise and clean without having to create all of these different blocks. So this is pretty much the general rule. You have to follow this pretty much for all of the CSS you write using a selector and then different properties contained inside of a block. So like I said, we're going to get much more experience with actually using CSS as we delve more um, into CSS and learning all of the different features it has to offer. All right, let's move on.